In this video, I'm going to show an example of integration where we complete the square to rewrite our integrand into something that we can um, be comfortable integrating. So I have to admit, this is not obvious at first, but once you go through this process a few times, you'll start to see the pattern and it hopefully will make some sense to you. So my hint to you or my strategy to you is if you're given a quadratic term in the denominator and you're unable to use u substitution or any other clever way, then maybe complete the square of that quadratic term in the denominator. So I have a bold claim over here that our integrand looks like 1 over 1 plus x squared. Now I have to admit the only thing that even sort of rings a bell is I have a 1 in the numerator and that it is quadratic. So, but I think we can get it to look something like this by completing the square. All right. So, to complete the square, hopefully you remember you take your uh, quadratic, which is usually in the form of a trinomial, and you're going to rewrite your terms with the variable, and then you're going to add a number squared, and that number is half of the linear constant. So the coefficient on the linear term is negative 2. Half of negative 2 is negative 1. I'm going to add negative 1 squared. But of course you can't just add numbers to expressions that changes their value. So you then subtract that number right back off. So if I added negative 1 squared, that means I added 1 to this expression. I need to subtract 1 right back off to keep that expression balanced or the same. Now, if we do that, then these first three terms make up a perfect square trinomial, where the first term is being squared, the last term is being squared, and if I were to double the product of these two bases, then that middle term happens to be that value, meaning x times negative 1 times 2 is a negative 2x. We call that a perfect square trinomial and it factors nicely. This is the binomial x minus 1 squared and then I'll add these uh, constants that's a plus 9. So this is what I mean by completing the square. And notice this sort of kind of looks like that form. I'm a, a little bit closer. All right, I'm going to rewrite my integral in using with my, I'm sorry, using my new denominator. So I have the integral of dx, and I factored this, or I completed, completed the square of the denominator. So now my denominator looks like this. The quantity x minus 1 squared plus 9 Now, I, I really want to use arc tangent, but the 9 needs to be a 1, and yeah. So in order to do that, I need to divide by 9 or factor by 9. So I'm going to go through and factor 9 from the denominator. Let's just reverse uh, multiplication. So if I factor out that 9 or pull it out. Then I'm just asking myself, 9 times what would give me x minus 1 squared? Well, I need a 1 ninth there to cancel out those 9's. And 9 divided by 9 leaves me with the 1 that I want. Let me just make sure that makes sense. If I were to take this 9 and distribute to this binomial, 9 times a ninth reduces, and that leaves me with x minus 1 squared. 9 times 1 is 9. So I just factored a 9 from that denominator position, and then I have a 1 ninth coefficient on this integrand. So I'm going to pull that 1 ninth completely out of the integration process.
All right. Now I have the one in that arctangent form, but if I want to use this u substitution, I need one thing that is being squared. And right now I have a one ninth times x minus one squared. So I need to somehow rewrite this. So I think I can be a little bit clever here. Let's see if I can rewrite this. I'll call this x minus 1 squared over the 9, but I'm going to call the 9 3 squared. Then, if you have a numerator and a denominator being raised to a power, you can write that as the whole fraction being raised to that power. So I'm going to do this one more time. Rewrite. 1 ninth times the integral of this thing, x minus 1 over 3, all being squared, plus 1. Just to make sure that makes sense. If you have this fraction being squared, that simply means you take the fraction and multiply it times itself. So x minus 1 times x minus 1 is x minus 1 squared, and 3 times 3 is 3 squared. So this just rewriting what it looks like, but in this form, I think I'm ready for u substitution. If I let u be the base of this exponential, one third x minus one, then du is still that one third. The derivative of x is just going to give me a dx. The one will go out to a constant. And I do have that one ninth out there. I'll just kind of ignore it. I just want dx. I don't have a one third inside my integrand. So I'm just going to multiply both sides of this, this equation by three. And that will allow me to use u substitution to rewrite my integral in terms of x into an integral in terms of u. I'm going to pull the 3 of the 3du completely out of the integration process. This fraction is just a fancy way of saying u, so I have u squared plus 1. Alright, that was some fancy footwork, but maybe now you see what I saw from the beginning. I have 1 over 1 plus u squared. This is just arctangent when we integrate it. So in my next step, I'll do this multiplication. I'll integrate this. And now I'm ready to change u back into x terms. And my final answer is one third tangent inverse of x minus one thirds plus some constant. So this strategy is if you see a, a quadratic denominator, one thought or one strategy is to complete the square of that quadratic denominator. Play around with some uh, factoring, see if you can rewrite it in the form of inverse trig, something like arctangent, and then you can use old school u substitution. All right, see you in the next video.